Wanda, the timekeeper, is here, everyone, and she's as bonkers insane as we all predicted. From mechanics never before seen, to the return of a glass cannon type class that you'll have to see to believe, it's her time to shine, for sure. So many thanks to Clay Entertainment and Fourth Floor for granting us early access to Wanda here before her official release on September 9th. And much love to the team for bringing us a character that's going to truly shake up the entire scene as we know it. So before we all throw up from staring at this new main menu for too long, let's spend some time with Wanda, yes? Yes, and we'll be needing to maximize our time with her from here on out, as unfortunately, our new friend doesn't exactly have that much to spare more often than not. Folks, say hello to the Age Meter, aka a ticking time bomb. While Wanda technically has 60 health to her name, it's the age meter here that will truly determine her well-being, as it continuously ages her by one year every 40 seconds. Now, in early testing, it appears that this 40 seconds remained the exact same no matter how young or old she became, so there's that. There's also the fact that as the age meter continues to rise and fall, Wanda undergoes three unique transformations of which we'll get to soon. For now, just note her pretty darn decent hunger and sanity stats among all this age nonsense. But it's not nonsense, actually. It's gonna be make or break for Wanda. As things stand now, Wanda's age meter can rest at a minimum of 20 years, and this is how Wanda herself will look in these early days. But reach age 36, however, and her first change is gonna occur. A unique shadow hand animation thing will engulf us, and our entire getup will transition to a much older look. Gray streaks in the hair, wrinkles in the face, you name it. But proceed to make it to the ripe age of 65 for your quote unquote final grow up, and you will achieve a granny style across the board. Heck, you'll even put on a few pounds too, which is all fun and game. But we ain't done yet, for you see, find yourself living to 80, and well, you won't actually be living any longer. If Wanda hits 80 years old through any means, she dies instantly. But enjoy a new death message with this new cause of death, alongside her ghost of course. But what does all this aging and de-aging mean for us? What happens as we grow old? Well, while damages will remain normal from ages 20 to 64, they will plummet come 65 and over, as Wanda will have become too frail by then. Expect to be dealing half damage as a granny, everyone. Half damage. Not only that, Granny Wanda will also begin to craft much slower than normal, so be aware of that. It's noticeable for sure. But as far as I can tell, those are actually the only downsides of being old. However, Wanda won't be going down without a fight, mind you. Especially with any shadow weaponry in hand. And why is that? Well, cause Granny Wanda here deals a whopping 75% more damage with shadow weapons as she ages. And my gosh, don't be messing with Shadow Granny. Folks, we've finally gotten our glass cannon. Enjoy, but let us talk about how else Wanda here can age beyond the natural causes. Now, I'm not entirely sure how it all breaks down per various amounts of damage taken currently, but I did my own testing with a bee that deals 10 damage, a spider that deals double that at 20, a knight that deals 40, and a moose goose that deals 75 in hopes of seeing a pattern. And I did. When a bee stung me, I aged by 4 years each time. When double the damage of a bee hit me when I was fighting a spider, I saw myself aging twice as fast, so 8 years each hit, which made sense. I doubled things again, and sure enough, I was adding 16 years onto my life with each hit taken, which ain't great. And finally, I noticed things might be capped at 30 years a hit once I got the Moose Goose here, as that is exactly how much quote unquote damage she did to us each strike. You know what that means, everyone? It means that we can only take but two hits from bosses or we're dead. Be mindful of that, or of course, wear a hat. We might not have health anymore, but armor will still save years of our lives each hit, so don't forget it. Oh, and don't forget that any health damage taken will lead to aging a few years. As yes, high or low temperatures will do it, or eating the wrong foods will too. 
Be careful, but it's main event time. The pocket watches. Wanda will be entering the constant in her middle age alongside an ageless watch and three timepieces as they're called. My advice, use the ageless watch ASAP as it will de-age you by seven years in the blink of an eye. And while they do have a cooldown of two minutes, there is nothing to stop you from making and spamming multiple in a row at the end of the day. Plus, enjoy zero durability across every single clock she can create. There's only cooldowns present here. But what about them other clocks? What are their deals and how do we even access them? Well, we do so through Wanda's clocksmithing tab, of course. There are eight new crafts awaiting us, so let's get to clockmaking. And we begin with the very important, very darn useful clockmaker's tools here. Fork over some gold, flint, and twigs for the ability to break down each and every pocket watch Wanda can possess, and at zero cost to you, you will receive all the materials needed to assemble them right back. Very, very nice, especially for a particular pocket watch that might be giving some folk headaches without one of these tools present. But that's not all, folks. Clockmaker tools are also essential to crafting timepieces here, of which go into nearly every single pocket watch themselves. But timepieces themselves cost 8 Thule Sight and 2 Nightmare Fuel too. And with some watches needing multiple timepieces, these watches won't be coming easy, mind you. Well, some of them, that is. For you see, them ageless watches we talked about earlier cost one timepiece, two marble, and a red gem to create. Which ain't bad for an item that will literally mean life or death to us, so there you go. And even the second chance watch here ain't all that bad at one timepiece once more, two living logs, and four bone shards. But what does the second chance watch actually do for us? Well, it gives us, or any fallen survivor, a second chance of course. In short, it is a revival item, kind of like a life-giving amulet, with absolutely zero durability and minimal downsides at the cost of a mere two-minute cooldown once crafted and used. So, yup, Wanda is already amazing, and we're only just getting started. That said, let's back up the hype a wee bit with the backstep watch here. Also extremely cheap for its potential, mind you, the Backstep Watch is essentially a way to reverse our space in time at will up to what seems like eight times and spaces. I get it, that probably sounds confusing considering that we've never seen anything like this beyond when we're lagging, I suppose, but we are stepping back to a specific yet somewhat random point in time along the exact path that we have just walked for a short time if you know what I mean. Now I see the potential, although more experience with it will be needed before final judgment and that kind of goes for this entire character. But what about gaining more control over our space and time? What if we could set a truly specific spot to always jump back to? Well, with the back trek watch, we can. Using a backtrack watch once will set a time in space or space in time for us wherever we stand. And if we are ever looking to return to that exact spot, all we must do is activate the backtrack watch once again. And as you can see here, we plop right back to that spot. Folks, a new form of fast travel is here. As long as you have the patience to wait out an 8 minute cooldown. That's a full day, mind you. But here's where things might get confusing. Only one backtrack watch will connect with one time in space, and there's really no way to differentiate between which spaces in which time correspond to which watch, apart from simply remembering which bloody watch brings you to where, if you know what I mean. And take into account that these travels can also happen from anywhere in the bloody world, and yes, that does include from the caves back to the surface, mind you, which is really cool, and things might be overwhelming very fast. So so label your watches, I guess. But next comes the Rift Watch, which is just about as confusing as the one prior, only it helps confuse everyone this time and not just you. Nah, kid. None of these watches are actually that hard to understand at their base function. Folks, all the Rift Watch is, is a back trek one that opens a temporary wormhole for multiple people to travel back instead of teleporting but you alone. That's it. It's nothing fancy. 
Unfortunately, they are a one-time use, though, and will become a basic back trekker following a rift closing. So be mindful there. But lastly, the creme de la creme. The alarming clock. Oddly, very inexpensive for what it does. An alarming clock is a Wanda-specific melee weapon that does offer some range to it like a whip will, which is very advantageous in and of itself, but it's also a weapon that will grow in strength as Wanda ages. It will deal an already high 81.6 damage initially while draining fuel with each hit. Damages will climb to 97.9 once Wanda is middle-aged, and yes, any additional Nightmare Fuel can be used to re-up this thing's durability. But finally, when Wanda is old and weak, this alarming clock will skyrocket to 142 damage a swing. Amazing. Simply amazing. Grannies for the win. But before we go, listen to this. Wanda's voice changes as she ages. Therefore, she has three different voices, technically. From a louder, younger set of chords to a weak, broken set. Open your ears. And there you have it everyone, Wanda the Timekeeper. Well, at least an early access version of her that is. Everything seen and heard here today is absolutely subject to change, and I imagine some of it will because she might be too good, but maybe that's the point, I'm not sure. But I will be sure to inform you all of said changes if and when they come to pass. For now, however, thanks again for the early look at a fantastic character nonetheless, Clay, and I cannot wait to learn more about her as I continue to test the routes. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Be sure to respect your time, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.